Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Captain of My Shed. I'm Captain Mikey, snow day in the workshop. In this episode, we're gonna start the big unit that's gonna run down the side. Um, as I'm filling up the workshop, I'm realizing I'm kind of in desperate need of it because that's gonna be my main piece of uh, storage, if you like. So until I've got that there, I can't tidy up the workshop. I can't set it up quite how I want it. And I can't continue to build other things. That's kind of uh, what's stopping me now. So that's what we're going to do in this episode. Kind of a top tip. If you've got a clamp like this, then clamp it to your board centrally along its length you can get your hand under then and lift it up a little bit easier than trying to grip the board they're awkward to carry otherwise just a little a little dipper <laughs> okay this is one of three sheets of this is the hardwood ply and it's not my first choice. I'd, ideally, I'd use birch, um, birch ply, but fraction of the cost. Each sheet at my local supplier costs £28. Compare that to the last time I got a quote for birch ply was maybe three or four weeks ago, and that was £140 a sheet. So, and, and it's getting more and more rare. So uh, you're going to be forever looking for alternatives. I believe Peter Millard is either about to do or has already done uh, a birch plywood alternatives video. So it'd be worth giving that a, a look because the cost implications are significant nowadays. Hardwood ply it is and uh, we're going to make it work. This is something I would never have been able to do in the old workshop. I'd never have been able to clear a space big enough to work around cutting down a full size sheet. If you don't know, a full size sheet tends to be standard 1 220 mil by 2 440 mil, approximately four by six foot. For our American friends, God bless y'all. Now, well actually now I'm gonna have a cup of tea, but uh, I've already got a little boo-boo. I mean, look, blood, sweat and tears for you guys. Nothing's too much. Um, that said, cup of tea. See you in a bit. What I think actually is a good idea, it seems working out so far, just to help me keep track, because there's so many cuts, as I've, as I've gone breaking down the board, I've cut off the piece that I've cut off on paper and sellotape that to the piece that I'm left with. And yeah, I, that's, that's working for me. You can see in the background the same thing, uh, even down to the small bits. It keeps the dimension it keeps the dimension that I need to cut to visible to me and it also keeps track of how far I've broken the board down. So, next board. I won't film all this, you get the idea. It's going to take you some time to do, so I'll plod on with that and I'll see you in a bit. I've now got to get the table saw up and running and in a position that's uh, nice and usable. So, that's what's happening now. Luckily, it's on wheels.
Okay, well, because I'm an idiot, I've managed to cut eight of these to the wrong length. I basically lined up my uh, stop, my ingenious little stop over there on the miter saw on a mark that I previously made um, instead of the correct mark. And uh, so, yeah, eight of these lengths are too short and I'll have to cut them again. And that's, uh, I don't think anyone can say measure twice, cut once enough because uh, there are idiots like me breathing your air. Anyway. look like this one and four back legs which look like this one the slight difference with the back leg here <clears throat> excuse me here is the uh, this cutout allows the back face to go right up against the wall if I need it to and there's a, a little bit of skirting basically around around the, the bottom of the wall and that'll fit just in there nice and neat. The joinery is effectively cut by just having a different length here so that when when this attaches to the, the bottom frame for example that will just fit nicely in there like a sort of mortise tenon joint. sides that will end up being the, the draw runners effectively. Right, pretty excited. After a bit of head scratching, quite a lot of head scratching, and uh, a little bit of trial and error, and one failed attempt, I've managed to come up with a couple of simple jigs that are going to make this job much easier, and uh, a little system. First thing I've got is um, this jig here. This will start the whole process off, this jig. So I'll put this on the bottom edge of the piece, like so. I've only got a nine mil um, router bit. So you could do this, you could do this with a 10 mil router bit and that, that will save you a, an issue. The material that needs to slot in there and slide quite freely is um, nine and a half mil. And I wanna give it about half a mil gap so 10 mil makes sense. So 10 mil is the, the, uh, the width of this slot that I'm trying to cut. To make it that little bit wider, I'm just taking a steel rule like this, placing it on the inside, or just resting it up against the edge that I run the router along, and it just offsets the router by the thickness of that ruler. The next jig that I've got, I will show you using this, is even more simple. It's just <clears throat> that material that I'm going to use, well, something similar anyway, that nine and a half mil uh, thick material stuck to a strip of uh, plywood. The strip of material on the back will locate into the slot that I've just cut. And then again, when I want to make the slot a little bit wider, I'll take my ruler and put it up against the edge that I'm bearing the router against. 
This, by the way, is moisture resistant MDF. It's 18 mil. I'm cutting down about half the depth, not quite half the depth with the router. And, uh, and the, the slot, as I said, is gonna be a, a 10 mil slot. Yeah, off we go. So that's all the grooves cut. It's nine grooves in each one. Uh, a little chamfer cut on the bottom corner of each one. Uh, a little line of CA glue which kind of bleeds into the MDF and just hardens it up so that I can sand it, make it nice and smooth. Later on, I'll put a, um, a little bit of uh, wax on there just to keep the friction down. But all of that up until sanding, and including sanding the bottom edge, 13 minutes. And I'm just looking at this in terms of one cost saving, which is clear, there's no, there's no draw runners to add, uh, but also two, I don't think I could add nine draw runners in 13 minutes, perhaps if I was really good, but I, I'm not that good. So from a time saving point of view, it's gonna save time and money. Win-win. I'm now gonna assemble this thing. We should end up with something that looks fairly organized. This one. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do, so that I can listen to some music while I'm doing it, is uh, time lapse this. careful with it. Yeah. See? Did you stab your hand with it? Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs>
a while ago I took apart a, um, a cabinet that I was throwing out and it left me with these heavy duty draw slides. I took them out because I figured maybe I'd use them one day. And um, although they're full extension, I think I might be able to use them. The idea with this is that I can slide the mitre saw out a little bit so that I can make a full depth cut without hitting the wall at the back. And then when I'm not using it, I can turn it to the side and push it back so that the whole unit doesn't have to be another, I don't know, nearly 20 centimetres further out. <clears throat> Might not be that much, but you get the picture. Anyway, these, I don't want them to be full length, but if I, if I cut off this portion, the bottom part, I'm left with this part of the slider. The ball race is going to spill balls everywhere. Yeah, there they go. A couple of catapults that these balls are going nice in. that's it thanks very much for sticking with me to the end appreciate it i felt this video is a little bit all over the place but hopefully you got the gist of what i'm trying to achieve uh, posting this video i'm not far off completing that whole unit now and it's looking really nice the next installment of that particular build we'll see it to completion it's looking really good and that video will make a bit more sense i'll keep it a little bit more uh to the point and um i'll take you through exactly what went into it what my thoughts were on on the design etc and uh, why it is the way it is. I think it's going to work really great in my workshop. I can't wait to be using it all the time. It'll be used to make the next bit of workshop furniture, which will probably work around my, uh, my new table saw. Loads of ideas, lots of workshop-based stuff and uh, new builds to come. Stick around if you want to see that. Check me out on Facebook as well, Captain of My Shed on uh, Facebook. I'm posting little bits and pieces there. Uh, things that I'm making, uh, little updates and stuff. So if you want to see a little bit more, then have a look at that. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next run and take it easy.